we are at the Amorphic Robot Works studio in Red Hook. It's also known as the Robotic Church. There is actually an interesting history of this building. This place in uh, 1880, there was uh, a whole crew of Norwegians that were building this church, and they were they were fishermen that worked out here. They labored intensely, and then they they started bringing together all these beams, and they they built this church. The labor of building this church by those individuals is amazing. The mission of Amorphic Robot Works is to create large-scale robotic sculpture. Studying traditional art, I was always drawn to dance and movement too. That was a kind of a natural evolution that, uh, from performing with my body, I then uh, I abandoned my body and I began to animate the skin that I would wear in my performances. The mission was to find an expression in these robotic uh, machines that that is close to communication. How would they communicate with each other? A lot of the performers are percussive. They're string instruments, chime instrument, some, you know, they play their own body, but there's a lot of rhythm. And rhythm um, goes back to the origin of communication. They struggle because they're machines. You feel empathy for them because um, they're, they're nuts and bolts and they're, and they're imitating human behavior. Spastic and pathetic elegant and graceful perhaps. They do counter to a certain extent these expectations of the dystopian view on, on robots. They are human in their own way. The spiritual aspect of this work emerges out of, out of the years of doing it. In the early days when I began making machines, they were made from different components that were often sacrificed from other machines, let's say. So each one was uh, the delivering of each of these guys into a life form was, was a, a physical ordeal. I thought in a, in a contemporary way I could deem these robotic saints as opposed to just robots. Chico's interest in the human body has led him to experiment with another material, which is a composite uh, high tensile fabric to find this soft movement. I made a whole body of uh, more like architectural scale inflatables that, that have been playing out these, these sort of lessons in how to make the ultimate soft machine that's humanoid and humanoid in scale. They do reflect on aspects of living organisms. So you can, you, you can feel, when they perform, you can feel that they're alive. The border crosser is this artwork that is, is meant to sort of um, propose this ephemeral gesture of peace and unity. This wheeled uh, blob of fabric appears in the desert setting in the rugged terrain of the border, it begins to deploy. And the idea is that the, the border crosser uh, grows into a, a monumental height arc and deploys the secondary arc over the border fence and touches the other side. So my work, most importantly, has looked at more uh, from, from the singular being human part to looking at how humans are being treated, you know, so it's, it's, it's grown outward. Instead of unity or pushing towards unity, what's tending to happen is there's a push to, uh, to separation. And I've been more interested in looking at the worldwide issues that I can address with my work. Yes, the machine can do, can pick the fruit. Yes, the machine can build you the car. Yes, the machine can weld better than you. Yes, the machine can play chess better than you. Yes, 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 et cetera, et cetera. We're playing out science fiction. But can the machine recover the earth that the machine is destroying for us? There will be more and more robots for the better and the worse. But if we can make a contribution to to creating a different expectations of what robots could be. An artistic robot to study our own humanity, make us think differently about what we are, what defines us as a human. 
but also what else we can create. Mm -hmm.